Good morning, everybody. My name is Bjorn. I'm the today's host of the episode on a coffee with one of our experts. Today, my guest is Christoph Rogowski. Christoph is with the HNE organization since more than eight years, and he was involved in many, many process water treatment uh, projects. And he became more and more our expert in regarding the topic uh, condensate treatment. So, welcome, Christoph. Good to have you here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Nice to meet you. All right, our today's topic is what are the best tips and tricks if we become to the condensate treatment plant? What brings me to my first question? Um, what, is, what is condensate and where does it come from? Okay, so first of all, uh, condensate is produced uh, in all processes where steam is used uh, for the process of our clients. Okay. So, for example, in the power plants, in chemical industries, in um, paper industries, in, and district heating networks. And what are the values you would expect? Uh, we would expect the uh, values on the clean condensate uh, after our uh, condensate polishing plants from conductivity of uh, lower than 0.08 microsiemens per centimeter. Okay. Uh, silica lower than 5 ppb. ppb, okay. Yeah. A sodium lower than 3 ppb mm -hmm. and uh, TOC lower than 0 0.2 ppm. All right, yeah. got it. Okay, and if it comes to the design, what do you pay most attention for? Mm -hmm. So before we can design a, a condensate polishing plant, um, it would be very helpful uh, if we have a raw condensate analysis from the client, yeah. Yeah. and it would be very helpful if we know what are the what is the client uh, requested for values of the clean condensate, mm -hmm. and what are the uh, requested run, uh, cycles, uh, the running time of the of uh, between two regeneration cycles. Yeah? Okay, and uh, you have to pay attention uh, on the flow rate. You have to ensure that the flow rate internal the vessel is not too low yeah. and this is not too high. Sure. If you have the flow rate too low, then there will be the counter ionic effect. Counter ionic yes, effect. Yes. Yes. That means that uh, the ionics uh, will be reloaded from the resin to the uh, clean condensate of the outlet. Okay. So no one wants this. Okay. <laughs> and. Uh, you have to pay attention on the temperature of the condensate. Yeah. Uh, typical range is uh, 40 degrees to, let me say, 60 degrees. If the temperature is higher than 60 degrees, for example, your anionic uh, uh, resin is not able to reject the silica. Ah, so okay. there will pass pay, through. Yes, will pass through and uh, there you have to pay attention for. Okay. Very good. And what needs to be considered in terms of the design of the vessel? Okay. Um, um, for the vessel entry, yeah, um, you have to be in, you have to ensure that there will be a laminar flow internal the uh, vessel. Okay. Internal the mixed resin, because if there is a turbulent flow, then your mixed resin will be dismixed and this will directly lead to lower uh, okay. quality. Okay. Um, you have to avoid dead ends within your uh, pipe routing, within okay. in your pipe uh, yeah. construction, especially in the chemical uh, pipings, okay. because uh, it will lead to chemical nests, and uh, this would lead to a lower regeneration efficiency and yeah. uh, a bad regeneration result and bad outlet quality. Yeah. You have to ensure the correct height of uh, um, uh, the, the, the insertion pipes yeah. and the correct height of the lowering pipes. If these uh, heights are uh, wrong, then yeah. your result of regeneration will be uh, not good. Okay. Um, then the last thing I want to mention here is uh, the correct position of the conductivity uh, measurement device okay. because uh, this value is uh, the most important uh, value to monitor your overall condensate polishing plant. And if this 
log uh, measurement device is located on the wrong uh, position, then you will have wrong conductivity values. Yeah. And you'll never know where your uh, condensate polishing plant uh, is at the moment. Right, right, right. Important, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. I mean, let's talk a little bit about operation. You mentioned this already. I mean, they are, from my understanding, there are two types of regeneration, right? There's an internal and an external. What are the pros and cons about these? Okay. Um, the, the internal re regeneration system uh, means that the regeneration process will be proceeded internal, the mixed bed uh, vessel, internal, the, okay, got internal yeah. the water steam cycle. Yeah. And the externally regenerated system means that the resin will be uh, transported from the working mix bed yeah. to the regeneration vessels and uh, the regeneration process will be pro proceeded in, in the regeneration vessels. So uh, the most, uh, the highest, the biggest benefits of the internal regeneration process is um, you have lower investment costs, Clear. you have uh, a smaller footprint because you have uh, not as much uh, vessels. vessels. Right, yeah. um, you will, um, the first, uh, the second benefit will be uh, you have no transport water, you save water. Yeah. Um, because there is no transport be uh, between um, regeneration vessel and mixed bed vessel. Yeah. Um, so, benefits on the externally regenerated uh, system is um, you have no chemical leakage within yeah. the water steam cycle. Okay. Um, um, you have uh, um, no cross contamination or you have better values uh, yeah. regarding cross contamination and uh, you have a higher regeneration efficiency. Okay. So, so the quality is better if it comes to the external regeneration. The, the, the regeneration quality and the, and the uh, outlet quality of the condensate is a little bit better within the external regenerated system. All right. yes. what, is most, what is most common? Is it more the internal or more the external regeneration? Well, I think uh, it depends on the region the condensate pollution plant uh, will be operated. Okay. Um, so we can say uh, in European market, uh, the most sufficient system is the internally regenerated system, okay. because okay. Uh, the benefits I mentioned before, and uh, if you are uh, in, in the US market or in the uh, Asia market, uh, then, then they want to have uh, the externally regenerated system. Interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, from, from your experience, I mean, what are the, the biggest failures you have ever seen or you have ever dealt with? <laughs> okay, there are many failures you can do, right. but uh, let me mention uh, three points. For example, um, you have to be careful if you have to um, transport your uh, vessel from the factory to the site okay. and uh, the outdoor temperature is uh, lower than five degrees. Okay. So, because uh, there is a rubber lining internal surface protection in the uh, mixed bed vessels and uh, if temperature is too low then the uh, rubber lining will be damaged Okay. and this will yeah. lead to uh, high corrosion uh, risk okay. internally in the yeah. vessel. Yeah. Um, second point is uh, we have to ensure that uh, the chemical dosing pumps and the regeneration pumps have the have enough pressure, enough pressure head uh, to to proceed the regeneration process. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, regeneration will completely fail. Yeah. And um, yeah, another point is uh, you have to choose your mixing air blower with the correct uh, pressure head. Um, otherwise, the mix bed resin will not be mixed. In, yeah, yeah, in a correct way, and your yeah, yeah. outlet uh, quality will, uh, will be lower than with the correct mixing air blower. Okay, so. very good, very good. Yeah, yeah okay, all right. Uh, many thanks, Christoph, for the insights, and many thanks for, for the very useful recommendations. Okay. Um,
If you have any further question uh, regarding the topic condensate treatment, if you have any further question uh, for for Christoph, just drop us a mail. Uh, the information uh, contact detail will be below this video. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.